Welcome to Weddings with Zeta. Here's your host and producer, Zeta Christian. Hi everyone, welcome to The Wedding Show, where you'll be inspired by the experts. Are you planning a destination wedding? Are you planning a honeymoon? If you are, you want to be here for the show tonight and listen to my wedding expert, Bill Potichek. He is a travel agent and a travel consultant and yes, there is a difference. And he's going to share all kinds of light on destination weddings and planning a honeymoon. And I'm sure there are going to be some things that might surprise you. Bill, thanks very much for being here. Well, thanks a lot, Zita, for having me here this evening. You know, so many people, they just don't comprehend what's involved and what kind of stuff a travel consultant does, yeah. how they get paid and things of that nature. Yeah. So hopefully by the end of this evening, they'll have a little better idea. That's it. And we're, <laughs> and we're going to cover all of that. In fact, one of the things I want to start right off with uh, because I didn't realize that there was a difference between a travel agent and a travel consultant. What, what is the difference? Well, basically, for uh, people that know where they want to go and uh, know what they want to do, they can use probably just about anybody, and I classify those as travel agents. And you may not be aware, Zita, but in the state of Connecticut, you don't even have to be registered to be a, a travel agent. And uh, therefore, anybody can go out there tomorrow, say they're a travel professional, and oh. not be one. Now, a consultant, to the contrary, which is what I consider myself, works a lot more with people that don't know where they want to go, yeah. to have maybe a pretty good idea of what they like to do, but uh, give me the opportunity to put together that custom vacation, honeymoon, or destination wedding that's going to hopefully bring their memories for many years to come. Well, I know that there, there is a certification that Travel Institute has a certification, right. Honeymoon and Destination Wedding Specialist, because I did notice on your website that you, you are you are that, a honeymoon <laughs> destination <laughs> wedding specialist um, certified by the Travel Institute. So w what does that mean and d does that give you, because the first thing I thought of was, does that give you access to resources that maybe a, a couple trying to book things on their own would not have? Well, for starters, uh, the Travel Institute, which is out of Wesley, Massachusetts, has a program that's a rather extensive education program where you actually have to take a final exam, which is proctored. By a, uh, by a professor in the business, and I, I passed that first. And once, uh, having been classified as a travel professional from the Institute, I then took additional uh, courses, which were on destination weddings and honeymoons, and in fact, passed that. And also, uh, for, uh, for honeymooners, and I do have some that, that take cruises, uh, I went with Cruise Lines International, which is out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and they have a rather extensive training program as well, which, fortunately, I also took all the courses and all the experience I had to have had first, yeah. passed their exams, and I have that. So I've got all the letters after my name. Not Good. that people know what they mean, but it's very important for, for people when considering an agent or a consultant for their travel. I would think, I would think it would, because if I'm going to have somebody advising me on any of those aspects related to travel, I'd like to know that this is somebody who, you know, who knows, who knows, well, who knows what they're talking yes. about. In fact, one of the, the two big things that I wanted to talk about tonight, and you just mentioned, destination weddings and honeymoons. So let's talk first, what is a destination wedding and what are the pros, what are the cons? Well, basically a destination wedding is just what it sounds like. Uh, people travel away from home and get married at a destination. But we're uh, talking a destination where you probably have to Fly or well, in many course. cases, yes. Uh, the, uh, the most popular areas for destination weddings are in the, in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. uh, but there are some in the United States. Las Vegas is a big one, and uh, oh. so, is, so is Florida. And, uh, you know, you asked about the pros and the cons. Yes. Uh, many couples, uh, number one, they may be a second wedding, so mm -hmm. they don't have a whole lot of people to, that they want to invite or to invite, so it's an ideal chance to get away. But many couples for, the, for their, say, their first wedding, 
it is far more economical for the bride and the groom because at many of these locations, a lot of items that they're paying for back here at home are included. Obviously the location, the meals, everything in many cases from the flowers to the preacher, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, included. The cons are obviously that fewer people have the opportunity to attend the wedding. So it is not uncommon for a couple to get married at a destination location. Then when they come home, have a little get together at their local hall, let's say, right. and, uh, and celebrate with friends and families and even show them their pictures that were taken during the wedding and see what possibly the honeymoon after. Mm -hmm. See what they missed, absolutely. You know, I have to tell you, the thing that occurred to me, and this is awful, but this is exactly what occurred to me. If a couple is not getting along with their family, like if there's some kind of friction or something, the destination wedding, like, like far, far away, is almost a guarantee that they won't have to deal with, with <laughs> As if I've never had that happen, that, to my knowledge anyway, and I've done several destination <laughs> wedding plannings, but uh, that is an interesting point, Zita. Uh, you know, so yeah, I'm sure nobody would ever do that. Oh, no. Uh, but, but you just mentioned some, some of the, the popular destinations, something in the Caribbean or, or, or Las Vegas. Uh, is there something, are there places that are the you know the the new on the horizon the up and coming trending places that people are looking to for destination weddings well one thing that i found which is definitely uh, up and coming is on cruise ships uh more cruise ships now not only can you get married in the port that the ship goes into mm -hmm. but several cruise lines now you have the opportunity to get married by the captain at sea and that's oh. rather unique because then the people that are going to this destination wedding are actually taking a cruise with you uh, as well. So, so they're having becoming, a vacation. Yeah, they're having a vacation as well. In another area, mostly out of the Northeast, Bermuda mm -hmm. is up and coming. It is becoming far more popular than it was. And Costa Rica, uh, interestingly enough, there are a lot more resorts there. And then, of course, you have the, the volcanoes and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of unique things there. So I'm finding that they're becoming more popular. And for people that really want to get away, you're finding uh, even as far away as, uh, as Tahiti, Fiji, mm. uh, Bora Bora, uh, you know, something that's romantic and yeah. don't be surprised if just it's the bride and groom that go away and locally as part of the package is the, you know, are the two witnesses and the, obviously the, the preacher and things right. of that nature. So I'm finding those are becoming even more popular. Well, you know, that then leads into the whole idea of planning the honeymoon because you know, we think traditionally of a honeymoon where here's, here's the wedding here and then the couple leaves and goes on a honeymoon. Right. But from what you're just saying, so here you have a couple who maybe will go to some destination to have their wedding, but they're at the place where they would have their honeymoon. And they are having their honeymoon there. As a matter of fact, it's yeah. not uncommon that a couple, uh, I've had this happen a few times, they will get married at a, at a resort which let's say is a four-star resort, more affordable for their guests. And then they proceed to go afterwards to the five-star resort because they might be able to visit their friends at the four-star, but their friends at the four-star can't visit them at the five-star. So they get their <laughs> privacy as well as the opportunity to spend their honeymoon with friends. Uh, oh, that's good. That's good. Um, you know, when, when, when you are helping a couple plan the either the destination wedding or the honeymoon, do you work with local connections like is there some network or something out there where you go oh, I'm gonna call up my you know my uh, my colleague in Iceland and because I have a couple who wants to go there for their honeymoon how does that work well basically for for destination weddings a couple first of all uh, will contact me and will consult with me and uh, and then the first thing to do is pick the date and I might mention to your viewers that I would probably suggest 12 to 18 months in advance because oh everybody gosh. wants a sunset wedding and there's yeah. only one of those a day. They normally cost more. Yeah. And as a result, it is not uncommon that the first thing they say is, you know, this is, well, first of all, we have to try to figure out where they want to go in the resort, right. okay? And then the time of the wedding. And then at that point in time, once I confirm the time of the wedding and the day of the wedding, I'm happily to say that I have contacts with the resort's wedding planner that does everything from the flowers to the napkins to the music which, to be quite honest with you, I am not an expert on, uh, having you know just been married once. But uh, then, then what happens is I then arrange the travel for all of their guests and keep track of and let the bride and groom know when their guests are going to be arriving, their room accommodations, and everything that's related to there. And uh, and yes, uh, when 
what, what, what will happen, and I have taken advantage of many cases uh, going to different resorts myself and actually experiencing weddings. Uh, I'm a certified uh, destination wedding planner for the Sandals Resorts in the Caribbean, oh, which are the number oh, one. They're, they're the number huge. one. Yeah. And they're also number one for honeymoon. has been voted number one 14 years in a row now. And, and other resorts. As a matter of fact, at the end of September, I'm actually going down to Cancun and Riviera Maya to take a destination wedding uh, symposium uh, seminar resort. So, so it's important to make the contacts and get to know the contacts, it is. It is. which is when you ask, are there additional benefits? Uh, it doesn't hurt for me to know the people that of I know. Relationships are so important in this they business. They are. They are. I mean, the whole wedding business, everything is about relationships. But when you can call up a colleague at, at one of the resorts and say, I'm sending a couple down and they would like you know, a particularly quiet place or they're, they're lively, they like to party, you can have a conversation with, with someone because you've, you have, you've built a relationship. And I also can believe everything they're telling me. Yeah, that's which important. is much better than somebody just going online, clicking, and maybe taking yeah. the word of oh, somebody yeah. else. <laughs> so uh, are there any international travel regulations that couples might not be aware of, either for themselves or you know, for, for family and children who well, might be coming? Well, one of, the, one of the, the things that I, that I review, obviously, if it's international, is that everybody has a passport, number one. Yeah. I also am on top of the, the different regulations. Some countries require visas not as many as what it used to be. Uh, some other have other kinds. And, and we're talking destination weddings. Believe me, the destinations have their own requirements, like Mexico, if it's, if it's a, what I say, a real wedding, not a symbolic one, you have to be there four days in advance. And oh. a variety of other things that you have to be aware of uh, for going to those things. So, so yes, it is important to stay on top of all the different requirements and regulations and make sure that people know that their passports have to be valid for six months beyond the date they're going to be returning. Many people don't know that either. Yes, I was a victim of that. <laughs> yes, it's, yeah, oh, that it's was, an unfortunate that was thing to show up at the airport, Zeta, and find out yes. that you can't get to where you want to get to. Yes, that, that, was, that was awkward. Um, I actually did have a valid passport that was newer, and, but I had left that one at home in the safe because I thought that's the <laughs> nice new one. I'll leave that there and I'll use the old one oh, not a good idea. in case something <laughs> happens to it. I had to go home and get it, which I did. Uh, but it occurred to me when I was thinking about destination weddings, and, and I was thinking internationally and you know, travel, and I thought, what do you do for the couple who says, oh, come on, everybody, we're, get the family together. We're going to have the wedding at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro. I mean, you just have to you know, get your passport, buy your ticket. I know you have to get immunizations, and you have to worry about this and that. And I mean, there's so much more. Oh, absolutely. And that's why I always recommend that, number one, the couples let me know who they anticipate going. Oh, yeah. And it's not uncommon that couples will tell me there are going to be 40 people going and 20 are only able to go. But, uh, and hopefully I also send out, like, the save the date cards and a variety of other things, the services uh -huh. that I provide, uh, obviously at no additional cost. And then the people that are traveling contact me and I make sure that they are just as much on top of everything that they, they have to have. And of course I guarantee the group space and you know, things of that nature as well. That's an important thing too, because I would think couples have so many other things yeah, on their mind. I tell them, don't worry about the travel. Let me worry about the travel. Yeah. You worry about whether you want the pink napkins, the, the music, whatever yeah. you want, and let me handle the rest. Because, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> you're planning a wedding, and even if it's a backyard wedding, I mean, there's so many different things oh, yeah. to think about. Can you imagine you're traveling out of the country or at least someplace where it's going to be, you know, hours and hours away, and it's not convenient to just come back home and get something? You know, I, actually, I actually had uh, one of the destination weddings I did where the couple contacted me, told me where they wanted to have the wedding, asked what I knew of the area. It happened to be down in Playa del Carmen in Mexico. I happened to know quite a bit about the resort and told them that, and they booked the, they booked the deposit with me. The bride called me up about a month later, about a week later, and said, Bill, I feel kind of guilty. And I said, Madeline, what are you talking about? She says, my fiance and I were at that resort. We knew all about the resort. We knew where we wanted to have the wedding. What we wanted to do was have a travel professional who knew about the area because we want all our guests to contact you. We don't want anything to do with their travel, and you certainly impressed us. That made my oh. head get a lot larger, and you know, nice. and I was very nice. I was very pleased, and they went and had a great time, by the way. Well, it's the <laughs> referrals are everything. I mean, everything. That, that's important. It. You know, I wanted to ask a couple other questions too about about the honeymoons. Yeah. About the honeymoons, because I think sometimes. Sometimes couples are looking for a place where they just they just want to get away, they want to relax. There's been so much tension 
even though it's wonderful, it's exciting kind of yeah. tension, but still there's, there's been so much pressure leading up to that day. And now it's over, they want to just relax. But I think sometimes couples want a sense of adventure or sometimes they want something that's it has an educational aspect, you know, like go to the Galapagos Islands or go, you know, hiking right. and go up a, a volcano or just, you know, lay on the beach or, or you know, tour Paris. Do you, is, do you see anything like where you would say, oh, couples who are coming to see me now, everybody wants to go here every for a honeymoon? Every couple that's out there is uniquely different. When, and well, and one know? thing that, well, one thing that I do is when, and I don't care if they're a honeymooner or a destination wedding couple or a couple wanted to take their 50th anniversary cruise. Yeah. It's very important for me to ask a lot of questions when they contact me. It's like important. What? Well, for instance, uh, the first questions I ask are the, the basic, their name, their address, their phone number, their email, uh, their birth dates. Now, what I have found over my 30 years in the business is if they're not willing to go that far, then they're probably just going to use me as a pricing tool, and that's oh. the end of the consultation. Oh. Assuming we can get all that information, and most of the times I do, then I ask them such things as, what do you like to do? What do you want to do? What yeah. are some of your objectives? Where did you go on your last vacation? Did you enjoy it? What didn't you like about it? Uh, yeah. Do you have a passport? Okay, Ooh, uh, things of that nature. Uh, I've actually uh, booked a trip for a couple. Actually, they won a, a trip to St. Martin, and ironically enough, for for a particular reason, the, uh, the the future husband could not get a passport. The U.S. wouldn't let him get oh, one, oh. and uh, so they couldn't go to St. Martin. But we did get them to St. Thomas, where they didn't need a passport, and they had a great time. But it's it's that's an important question to ask. And oh, wow. you know, I, I always say that I got to you know I got 20 questions. I don't really know if it's 20, but the more information that anyone traveling can answer for me. It makes things a lot easier. And of course, probably almost the most important thing is how much money do they feel comfortable spending? That's not, a, that yes. I'm gonna, not that I'm going to spend it all. But if you tell me you want to go to the Caribbean for a week in an all-inclusive and your budget's $1,500, we got a problem. And by the same token, if you tell me you've got $10,000, I'll tell you I'm not going to spend it all, but I'm going to get you a beautiful five-star resort all-inclusive, yeah. and you're going to have a heck of a good time. So you can work with somebody's budget and maybe say Absolutely. if your budget is small, maybe you look at someplace else. Absolutely. I mean, people don't realize, or a lot of people don't realize, that we get commissioned by the suppliers. It does not cost the individual any more money to do it on their own than to use a travel professional. Oh, wait and, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I didn't know that. So, see, a lot of people don't know that, Zeta. And, and, and what it is, is, is the suppliers, whether it be a cruise line or whether it be a resort or whether it be a tour packages, and I only really work with wholesalers that are bonded, and that's a story for another one of your shows, oh, okay. okay, but it's very important if that company goes out of business that your money is protected, yeah. okay, and, and as a result, these suppliers, because of the relationships that I've developed, will match prices. So if you found something that's a perfect oh. trip, you call me up and say, hey, I, even if you found it on Expedia, I don't, it doesn't bother me, all right? I have people that will match it, and now you get the customer service that goes along with oh, it. Oh, nice. So that's, that's a tremendous advantage. And like I say, uh, most people don't know that. Uh, you know, I listen to that, and I think, um, you know, we, Dick and I worked with uh, a travel agent uh, in the 80s. We went, to, we went to Europe several times, and it was so helpful that I had never been out of the country before. Yeah. It was very helpful. And then he won a trip couple years ago in a sweepstakes and there was a travel agent assigned to work with us my gosh it was what a pampering experience it was great and I just want to be sure I understand correctly because I don't want to pass this along no. if it's not if it's not correct if somebody comes to you to say help me book help me plan help me book this destination wedding and the, the travel part the of travel it, part the travel part and or or the honeymoon it does not cost them something to work with you just no the no. only time that it, that it would cost them, let's say, let's call it a consultant fee. Yeah. Okay. As if it is something really detailed that has no commission attached to it. Now that's pretty far and few between. Matter of fact, if you're booking the entire package, it's no secret the airlines don't pay commissions anymore. But I don't charge a fee if you're booking a package. Now, if okay. you just want an airline ticket, which is non-commissionable, then that's that's a that's different, different story. But I yeah. obviously let like people know that in advance. But All there right. are very, very, uh, very few things. Bill, I have to tell you, you know, I post this, post this question on Facebook. So I, I asked, if you were planning a honeymoon, where would you go? And I got a couple responses. So first, Laurie from Florida said 
she'd like to plan a second honeymoon and go to Siena because of the beautiful scenery, the fabulous food, and because the city is so walkable. Interesting. So th that whole idea, now she's talking a second, a second honeymoon, right. but the idea of being able to walk, but some places would require maybe more, um, a, a healthier constitution than, than some other places. They, they, they have places even within the United States that are actually have health programs. People go there to, to get spa treatments, to everything from oh, losing yeah. weight to relaxing. And, and that's within the United States. And obviously there are places, a lot of uh, spa locations over in Europe yeah. and elsewhere that, uh, that work quite well for the relaxation uh, uh, part of travel. Again, mm -hmm. it's important to know what people like to do. And it sounds like, you know, like uh, she has a pretty good idea. So yeah, by calling does. me up and telling me that, that would help me go, would save one of my 20 questions. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so then there was one more. This was from Eileen in Virginia. She too said, second honeymoon, and she said she would want to go to Scotland. And interesting, she, she, uh, we had a little private email exchange, and she said it's not, it wouldn't be so, she said it's not so much the honey in honeymoon the second time around. She said the second time she said she would want to go to a, she would pick a place because it's someplace she had always wanted to go. Yeah. It's almost like you're looking at a bucket list. Well, you know, and and I have a lot go. of, by the way, I have a bucket list of my own, Ooh, you know, which is kind as? of interesting. What yeah. are, if people say, you know, what's, what's been your favorite vacation? I said yeah. it's the one I haven't been on yet. Yeah, it happens to be go. Australia and New Zealand. Oh. But the African safari I went on, that was phenomenal. You did that, huh? I did that, yeah. And did I you have to get a lot of that. shots and stuff? I didn't, and need, I didn't need shots. It was South Africa. I didn't need shots. I didn't need a visa, and you don't need those currently for, for I South didn't know Africa. that. Yeah, but that's, you know. I love planning my own trips, and by the way, you know, I, I do go out quite often and spend my own money. No, for your, for your people watching the show, we don't go free everywhere no, we I go. We have to yeah. go free elsewhere, anywhere. Yeah. But, uh, but again, education is a very important aspect. It really so, is. You, you and by the way, Scot Scotland is beautiful, I will admit. I have never been to Scotland, yeah. but I'll tell you, I'm going with four other couples to uh, Ireland in October. So oh, looking forward nice, to that because nice. I haven't been there either. <laughs> I've been there and it, and, and it was wonderful. So I, I was just going to ask you about how early a couple should book their, their honeymoon and you had mentioned earlier. Well, eight, the eight average is four to six months, but oh. I recommend uh, up, to a, up to a year. It can be more. I mean, you know, if airs, you can't book air until 11 no. months in advance, but that doesn't mean that I can't monitor what's going on. And let me say one other thing that I do that, that you'll find that these online people don't do is if you book your vacation, let's, let's say it's a cruise, and deposit for it, it's a little known fact that the cruise lines, if they have a promotion which is more to your advantage up to final payment, you can take advantage of that reduction, upgrade, or oh. what have you. And I monitor those things for my client. I just got a client that's going on a sandals honeymoon, as a matter of fact. They came out just yesterday with a $550 spa credit. I noticed that the room was still available, the cost was still the same. So they are now getting a five hundred fifty-five dollars spot credit because nice. I was on the ball. Nice. Helps bring referrals. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, one of the things that occurred to me, there, there's so much now in terms of, of, of the DIY. You know, the do it do it yourself. Yeah. Uh, many many aspects of, of planning a wedding and a honeymoon. What are some of the um, the common mistakes that people make when they book their own wedding or honeymoon travel? Well, a, a, a few things that they might do is they don't plan on getting to where they're going a day ahead of time, whether it be a cruise or what have you. And I've, I've had stories where, uh, where people have missed the ship because it was a storm and they couldn't get to it, oh. or they oh. missed the, the, the tour. Uh, I always recommend clients go in a day early if they're going on, on trips of that, of that nature. Uh, I've had people that have made their own airline arrangements and didn't realize that they had about a 26-hour layover in some intermediate spot because they thought they were arriving the next day. Those things happen. But, but a very, very important thing is that all my clients, I strongly recommend that they take travel insurance. And because that's, that's something that would protect them if there was a storm and they didn't get to the ship or uh, if, if someone got ill and they couldn't take the trip at all, uh, a variety of things of that nature. And, you know, the, although the premium is based on age and the amount of the trip, a lot of my honeymooners are all young people, so their premiums so are not... So it's not going to cost much uh, at no, all. No, it's a very small percentage of what a trip could cost them if they don't, if they you don't know, take the insurance. You know, Bill, I was at a... Um, 
I was at a, a hotel after doing a, I'm, I'm an officiant and I had done a wedding yeah. and, and it was a late, I was in another state. So I booked a hotel and stayed, you know, then figured I'd leave in the morning. That night, I'm there about 1030 and there were, um, there was a couple, in fact, there were two couples checking in and they had just come from their own wedding and they were catching a 6 a.m. flight the next day. Oh my they, God. So they were telling the, the clerk at the desk that they needed the, the 4 a.m. shuttle. And I thought, oh my gosh, how do you do that? How do you have the wedding and the nighttime reception? Get to the hotel and I mean, bleary eyed and getting up at four in the morning. First, first of all, Zita, excuse me for interrupting. No, no, go ahead. Because I had a client that it happened to. Number yeah. one recommendation bring a crank alarm clock. Okay. Oh, okay. Number two, set the alarm clock in your room. Number three, leave a wake up call. And hopefully with all three of those, you won't miss a flight like one of my honeymooners did about 10 years ago. And I oh. actually got to attend the wedding and they didn't have the crank alarm. The hotel swore they gave them the wake up call. They missed their flight and it cost them $800 more to fly commercial oh. down oh. to Aruba rather than take the charter they were scheduled on. And I didn't realize it until I got a call from the charter operator. Hey, by the way, your client didn't make the plane. Yeah. Are they going? Oh, boy. Sad oh, situation. That's rough. That's rough. Let me ask um, one other thing, too. We hear a lot about, um, we hear a lot about uh, travel specials and packages. Yeah. Are they real? Some are, and some you've got to be careful because they don't include all the taxes and all the fees and everything oh. else. And one thing I strongly recommend that people stay away from are those postcards they get in the mail that they just want a four day, three night oh. cruise to the Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, if it looks too good to be true, you know, any, anyone can, can contact me, call me up, and I've had it happen, say, hey, I got one of these postcards or I see this, this deal is really, really out there and yeah. what about it? And believe me, if the deal is out there, then I can probably get it. And the one thing I try to tell people is, is I don't sell deals, I sell expertise. Now, it probably amounts to the same amount of money, but, you know, it's, th there's, there's a lot of scams that are out there, unfortunately. I would so much rather deal with an agent, a travel consultant, who can say to me, you're making plans to go to this particular place. There's been some political unrest there, or this is the season of the monsoon, yeah. or this is the time of year you're going to go there, and the whole s that whole part of the country is going to be closed for August, and... Um, you don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to be there. I mean, I would never know those things. Yeah. And, and and you know, it's important. Oh. You know, any of your, your your guests that are watching the show. I mean, I've got no problems at all if they contact me. Yeah. I mean, and Bill, I'm and I'm sorry. I'm I am going to advise people to contact you, but I am getting the signal that we're out of time. Oh. I just want to mention too that I know Bill through Dream Travel Vacations, his company is going to be giving away a honeymoon in St. Martin. We don't have the details here to give you tonight, but if you go to his website, you can get all of the details. A honeymoon in St. Martin. That's a pretty good deal. Oh, yeah. It's a nice um, two-bedroom villa, too. Good. <laughs> so, Bill, this is, this is Bill Potacek, and he is with Dream Travel Vacations. Thanks very much for being on the show, hey, Bill. Hey, no problem yeah. at all. I want to thank the crew tonight for helping out, and I also want to thank you and the viewing audience. I do want you to join us again next time where we'll have more expert advice about weddings. And in the meantime, you know what they say about love. So go ahead and make the world go around, <laughs> and join us again next time. Are you planning a wedding or renewing your vows? Let today's leading wedding vendors inspire and guide you. To learn about upcoming guests and join the discussion, like us on Facebook, Zeta TV. Weddings with Zeta is a program of Moon River Rituals. For more information, visit ZetaTV.com.